Welcome to Electron Line, and here we're going to take a closer look at what we call resistivity, the causes of it and how it works in different kinds of materials. You can say that for conductivity, materials fall in three different categories. One is called the metals, which typically are very good conductors. Then we have what we call semiconductors, and then we have something called superconductors, which is a very special category in itself. What we found was that the vast majority of metals when you run a current through them, they will, of course, exhibit a certain amount of resistivity, resistance to the current flow, and we find that that resistivity changes per temperature. For example, the resistivity actually increases for increasing temperatures. Now, it's not quite a linear function, a linear relationship, but for our purpose, and for most purposes, since the temperatures are within a certain range, we can assume that the the uh, change in the resistivity is somewhat of a linear function. And so what we're looking for is we're looking for maybe a base point where we start taking the, um, the measurement. And so we take a base point, a temperature equals 20 degrees centigrade, which is roughly room temperature. And so what we do there is we know that the function between resistivity and temperature is somewhat of a curve. But if we draw a tangent line to that curve at the base temperature of 20 degrees centigrade, we can see that that straight line doesn't diverge very much from the curved line right there. And we know that the slope of that line is equal to the resistivity at 20 degrees centigrade times what we call a temperature coefficient. So here's the equation that relates the resistivity of a material as a function of temperature to the changing temperature. Now, here we have the resistivity at 20 degrees centigrade, and then we multiply the times 1 plus the what we call the temperature coefficient times the difference in the temperature between the actual temperature and, what, and the 20 degrees uh, centigrade temperature. Now, if you want to make that look into an, like an equation that says y equals mx plus b, which is the straight line equation, let's look for the slope of that equation. We can do the same thing here. Notice that in this case, the resistivity is the y, and the variable x is the temperature t. So let's uh, expand this equation, see what it looks like. So the resistivity is equal to the, I'm going to multiply this through, so the resistivity at 20 degrees centigrade plus the resistivity at 20 degrees centigrade times the temperature coefficient. And then, of course, we have to multiply the times t and minus t sub naught, so times t minus the resistivity times the coefficient times t sub naught. Now this here is a constant, because there's no variation in there at all. That's a constant, that's a constant, that's a constant. So we can move that over here. So we have the resistivity is equal to, I'm going to write this term first, resistivity times the um, temperature coefficient times the temperature, which is the variable on the right side the equation that corresponds to the x right there. And then we have plus this quantity, I'll put in parentheses, resistivity at 20 degrees centigrade minus this term right there. This whole thing here is a constant. And let me clean it up a little bit. There you go. This whole term there is a constant. There's your x and the coefficient in front of the x. So this then represents the slope of the straight line, which is what I indicated here. So the resistivity times the temperature coefficient multiplied together form the slope of that line. And we find that for most temperatures between maybe, you know, zero degrees centigrade and maybe all the way up to 100 degrees centigrade, that is a fairly accurate representation of how the resistivity changed for typical materials. Notice the temperature coefficient here for some common uh, elements, aluminum, brass, which is not an element, it's, a, it's an alloy, copper, iron, lead, and silver. And notice that they're all fairly similar. They all range anywhere from 0.002 to about 0.005 average around maybe 0 0.004, which means there's a 0.4% change in the resistivity for every degree centigrade change of the temperature of the metal. So for a 10 degrees temperature change, it's about a 4% change. A 100 degree temperature difference, now we're talking about a 40 degree change, and uh, not a 40, but a 40% change. And so then it becomes significant. And so when we deal with conductivities and resistivities, and we're dealing with the fact that temperature changes, we do have to uh, appreciate the fact that the resistivity changes appreciably when the temperature changes a large amount. So this is definitely something you want to take into account when you know that the temperature of the metal is changing while you run a current through them. All right, we'll talk a little bit more about how to manipulate this equation, how to use it to find 
changing resistances and to find the potential across conductors based upon the resistivity as it changes with temperature. Now, a couple more things we want to look at here. Semiconductors, a very different kind of material. Semiconductors conduct electricity or current fairly easily. Um, and it notice, notice here that as temperature increases, the resistivity of semiconductors actually decreases. For example, graphite, which is basically the, the um, what we'd call here, I need to take a time out here because, uh, oh, hmm. uh, graphite, which is basically the lattice structure of carbon, notice that the temperature coefficient is actually negative, which means that the temperature, as the temperature increases, the resistivity decreases. And then we have a very special kind of material, which in the future may become extremely important to us, superconductors. So we have found, and I'll do another video on in particular about superconductors, but we have found that when you decrease the temperature on certain materials, once you reach a critical temperature, that's what T sub C means, and those temperatures are usually very, very low, very close to the absolute, um, absolute value of zero degrees Kelvin, the resistivity actually drops to zero, not a small fraction, but actually to zero, which means that once you get a current flowing in a superconductor, below a particular temperature, that current will just continue forever and ever and ever. If you make a loop of that and you inject a current into that loop, that current will just continue to go on forever without stopping, which is really a remarkable thing because in thermodynamics we're not used to having things that are basically 100% efficient, but a superconductor becomes nearly, if not completely, 100% efficient in conducting current. Again, at very low temperatures, in such a way that we don't have very many practical uses of that yet because it's very difficult to keep things at those cold temperatures. Some recent developments in superconductors have actually shown that I believe at a temperature as low as 130 Kelvin, which is really quite high when you think about it, still very cold, but quite high so that you can actually cool it with liquid nitrogen instead of liquid helium, we've been able to find some alloys that have superconductivity properties at relatively high temperatures. And so we're still studying, still trying to find where we can find superconductivity at even higher temperatures to make it more practical. But this is quite remarkable, and we'll look into that a little bit more. So that gives you now a, a feel of how the resistivity does change in different kinds of materials in different ways, and something we, something we should take into account when we're dealing with resistivity and resistance. There we go.